yeah, I suspect I'm not the only one doing that. It might be, uh, I mean, it's an interesting, although maybe a random question, why is that so? Uh, the thing is, most of the time there's no one to blame, it's just you know, things happen. Uh, you know, some, you have like processes that uh, there's a project group and uh, a spec and it's very formal and you get good data, but most of the time things happen because somebody in the corner started collecting some data and using it and all the people say, oh, well, that's interesting. And you know, they, they started to rely on that data, but it was never, it was never a formal process. And you know, that's how you end up with the databases that are really weird. Because it was not a database, I mean, the normal cycle of a database is somebody just writes down on a piece of paper, a few months later they put it on an Excel sheet, uh, spreadsheet, and then if you like it, it ends up in MySQL or, uh, what's that, MS uh, server? Cyber so yeah. access. Yeah. Access, yeah. thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just happens, and then one day people realize that it's really you know, important uh, that data is important and you know, we need to console, consolidate it and uh, formalize all of that and nobody has ever looked at it and it's key it. Uh, with XML, you know, you create XML because you know, checkbox, we need to create XML but we don't really know what for or like that and so the tagging is not appropriate to what we're going to use or the tagging is good enough to print it because that's what we do, we print. Uh, but uh, later on, if you want to, as I was showing, follow a link, and not just print it in bold, yeah. you're out of luck. One other thing to realize that entering data is not most people's main job. No. They have a job, and the byproduct of that job is uh, Entering, uh, storing data about that job, but uh, they don't, they don't really, uh, they don't really use that data. It's somebody else who uses the data later. So, and finally, I, I gotta name at least one person which is responsible, and that would be like uh, the, the XML badly tag. Uh, that would be. Uh, I just started in the company and didn't really know the data well enough. Uh, so. This, basically, things happen and you can't really blame anyone. Anyway. So I feel better now. And so much better now. <laughs> I've saved that presentation 50 times at least with just one animation and it always comes back. I might have been is crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the software is crap too. Well, more. <laughs> Actually, we should start a list uh, hate data, <laughs> not to hate software. So now what? Uh, what do you do when you're you know, facing uh, bad data? First, know your data. I spend a lot of time looking at data. It's very instructive, actually. It, it makes you look good. Ah. Uh, you know, if you've looked at it enough, you, you know stuff about uh, the data that people actually enter the data or use the data don't know. So it, really good. And then you start to build the clean space. You know, you have a, a step in your process, which is just filtering, cleaning up the data, uh, move the mess as far upstream as possible. So when the data quality improves, you will be able to reduce the rest of the code. And uh, yeah, the data quality will never improve. Or it will improve here and uh, degrade somewhere else. You will be, the, the data will be cropping interesting ways and different than before. An important thing is you have to accept that the results will be imperfect. So you, you can fix things in code and go quite a long way, but at some point you have to realize that yeah. it's not worth you know, just trying to fix it uh, automatically more. It's just plan to have a phase where you just, the, the, the last uh, weird things you just fix manually and uh, capture that and be able to uh, replay it if you need, but you know, no one to stop. I, you can 
hire somebody to, to fix it. It costs less than you spending two more weeks uh, filling the, the last few bugs. And log, log, log what happens and uh, when your, uh, your cleanup process fails, uh, figure out what, why, where, and what to do. Uh, don't log too much because when you end up with like uh, megabytes of logs, you're not going to read them. So this leads to a stuff a little bit that's some interesting characteristics. So yeah, I call it garbage in stuff out. So it's usually batch, so which means it doesn't matter if it's slow. It's not too slow, but so that's that's a good thing. I usually don't have to care too much about scalability and stuff like that. It's just one one machine that that single user. Just me. Uh, that means that I can use, for example, a SQLite in my database. No administrative hassle. Uh, on the other hand, it's usually hard to test because my code has to just handle what's thrown at it. And I don't know what's going to get thrown at it. So, you know, it really depends on the input. And by definition, I don't know what the input is because I'm trying to clean up. So you know, the proof that it works is that I get something clean in the end. So I, I can check that I get something clean. But the, the spec at the beginning is you know, get this mass of crappy data and try to get something relatively clean out of it. So go to rescue. Perl is really good at fighting entropy. Fighting data that starts decaying slowly over time. Uh, Rayquest is the thing I use the most because you identify you know, hidden patterns in the data and you name them. It's, you know, it's what I used to do a fuzzy matching. Uh, it's meant to be, of course. <laughs> Uh, which has lots of ways to add structure to a uh, semi structured XML, including uh, some regex uh, type. Uh, you can apply regex on uh, elements and stuff like that, amongst the many hundred methods uh, of XML tree. There's a few of them that I use a lot. Uh, yeah, it's simple uh, to massage the data in the database. You know, I don't really use uh, ORMs or or things like that. I'm just stay at a low level. Uh, things like HTML tribular X path to extract uh, data from those web pages that hold really important information hidden in uh, in word uh, generated code. Uh, X template because you know, the the templates I use, uh, no web design is going to look at. The text template is enough for it. Also, you know, all the tools, uh, the usual Unix tools, Red, Brocade, IconV, SQLite, Image Magic. Uh, basically, it's uh, stuff to get you done. <laughs> it's usually nothing fancy, just whatever works. Uh, system calls, put uh, sort, sort and uh, unique. Uh, oh, and also every now and then, I get stuck. Format the, the frame maker format I was telling you about. Well, I had to write something uh, that converts that into something uh, a little more modern, like MathML. So I got to play with some cool technology. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. That's the kind of thing you hear about at conferences usually. <laughs> Actually, I have to open source that. So, a bit of why this stuff? Uh, is it I'm alone you know, dealing with crappy data? Uh, and then I need to look for another job. <laughs> and every, but every other job I had was the same thing. I've dealt with a. Uh, 
uh, aircraft documentation system that uh, lasted 25 years. You can imagine the, the state of the data that was at the beginning. It was actually cleaner than the one that was at the end. Uh, standards that were written 30 years ago. Uh, satellite control systems that had been designed 15 years before I uh, started working with them. <laughs> so if I'm not going maybe you, know, you are dealing with crappy data, I'm not alone. And uh, yeah, we can have a beer together. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's also when, when I started uh, my first job of the year there working on a satellite control system. I was talking to a guy who had been there for 20 years and I told him, yeah, it was nice working here, but they never gave me a speck of anything. I went went for, I said, yeah, yeah, for 20 years I've never seen a speck. <laughs> so, you know, if there's anybody here who just started working, uh, yeah, that's real life. <laughs> and finally, thank you, Per, because that's, uh, they put it and I'm probably badly paraphrasing. Uh, Burr makes the, the interesting jobs possible and the boring jobs bearable. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually kind of like massaging uh, weird data. So it's still fun. Thank you. <laughs> Any uh, questions? <laughs>